On today's episode, we're going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of creating a custom paint job and unique color for your calipers at a professional performance shop. This episode is part of a larger series about installing JRZ RS Pro suspension on my Audi R8, and in that process, we repainted the black original calipers red to match the hue of the taillights. To watch the entire suspension restoration, click the link above. Now to change the color of your calipers, you have a few different options. Number one, you can do it in your driveway and hope for the best. As you know, I'm a huge fan of DIY, but make sure you are a thousand percent knowledgeable and properly equipped when playing with your brakes. Number two, you can drive your car intact to performance industries and just simply leave it there. Or in my case, bring just the calipers themselves if you happen to be doing other work on your car at the same time. Also keep in mind the paint being used at performance is proprietary high temp paint that can withstand track heat and more abuse than just rattle can applications, as my calipers, pads, and brake fluid will be changed more often than a regular street car, and I want it to look factory applied. But whatever method is best for you, just be sure to do it safely. No one cares about the color of your calipers if they don't work properly. With the R8 in the shop getting a new suspension, we conveniently removed all four calipers and both rear tiny e-brake calipers and boxed them up for my trip down to New Rochelle, New York. Before my arrival, Mario mocked up some sample colors and designs in Photoshop for me. And based on the new wrap and charcoal metallic rims that are coming, I knew I wanted something dark red to match the taillights, but unique at the same time. I had no logo before. We're gonna add the ammo logo. Now the ammo logo, we can make that pretty much any color that you'd like. Just as a point of reference, the panel right here is the standard Porsche caliper red. Notice it's lighter hue, which I didn't want, especially because it's an Audi. I ended up picking this darker pearl red, which requires a three-stage paint job, base coat, mid coat, and a top coat in high temp clear. At the same time, we mocked up the ammo letter color as well, which would end up being black based on its future track driving and how crazy I would be if white was used. Keeping it clean would be a nightmare on the brakes. Now, if you remember from my R8 purchase video, the shifter knob was really nicked up and the OEM replacement is nearly $500, which is insane. So I asked Mario if he could refinish the aluminum to minimize the deep gouges, which he said wouldn't be a problem. He also suggested removing the shift pattern insert and adding the ammo shield in its place to match the calipers. With that, he handed off the shifter to Marcos as he would need to fabricate a jig to hook up the knob onto the lathe. While that was in the works, the calipers were unwrapped from SST Auto, and a special welded brake bleeder valve is tightened into the threads to prevent any water or paint from getting in and the remaining brake fluid from coming out. Next, they were immediately cleaned in a special degreaser to remove the first layer of junk. Then, they were thoroughly washed with a scrub pad to remove the embedded brake dust. For round two of cleaning, Hank, or what everyone at the shop calls him, Baby Rambo, cleans the caliper with lacquer thinner to remove any remaining grease or brake fluid before sanding with 320 grit on an air-powered 2-inch tool, which made easy work of the old R8 logo. Likewise, any chips or deep dings are sanded down flat as well. With no exaggeration, each caliper took at least an hour to prep, sand, clean, and tape up. As most of you know, especially from the 964 repaint, the prep process is way more involved than the actual painting process. The quality of the coverage depends on how well Hank masks off the areas. Now check this out. For the caliper bolt holes, Hank uses a small diameter socket, puts it on the tape, and then cuts it out for a precise fit. Same thing for the other mounting surfaces. The caliper pistons are another story, as they need to be a thousand percent clean or the tape won't stick and there isn't a lot of room to work in there, so this is quite unforgiving and patience is certainly a prerequisite for this type of precise work. While Hank was playing with the pistons, Mario cleaned the wheel well plastics to enhance the depth and contrast of the caliper against the background of the wheel itself. That's how crazy these guys are about doing a complete job. First, he pre-rinses and washes the plastic thoroughly with a heavy degreasing soap. Next, he rinses, then dries with compressed air and a towel. Once 100% dry, he then added three coats of trim black to the faded plastic. We did a quick 50-50 shot to show you the before and after. This is a way better contrast than the original whitish plastic and will make the caliper pop out much more than it did before. Once all the calipers were prepped, they were hung in the booth until the paint was mixed. 
Meanwhile, on the other side of the shop, Marcos got the jig set up for the shifter in the lathe and decided to start with 220 grit to remove the heavy gouges. But because the aluminum is so soft, the sandpaper made quick work of the nicks, leaving behind a beautiful brushed look. After a few more passes with lighter grit to refine the 220, he applied aluminum polish to a towel and brought back the shine instantly. The damage is gone and it looked much better than before. Over in the paint booth, Greg was double checking the cleanliness of the calipers and preparing for the first few light base coats. Next, the pearl is mixed in with the color for its unique and brilliant mid coat layer. Once coat number two was dried and before the third and final coat, Greg applies the ammo logos to all four caliper faces where the original R8 logo once was. Afterwards, the last layer of high temp clear is applied and allowed to bake overnight. The next day, they were ready to be packed up with the new wheels and shifter knob bound for SST Auto in Danbury, Connecticut. Once they arrived, I removed all the masking tape while Mike unscrewed the temporary brake bleeders to prevent overspray on the threads. Then he compressed the pistons fully while trying to minimize any leftover brake fluid from leaking out onto the fresh paint. Once ready, the calipers are attached to the hub with two bolts and torqued into place. The new brake pads are inserted and connected to the brake line sensors. Then the new pad retaining pin and anti-rattle spring are installed to hold the pad in the calipers securely. Finally, the brake line is carefully reinstalled to avoid drippage and staining the paint, and the process was repeated on the remaining three wheels. However, on the rear e-brake calipers, we didn't order new pad retaining pins or anti-rattle springs because no one ever really runs out of e-brake, so they don't often need to be replaced, and most people certainly don't repaint them. Regardless, the old ones look really ugly, so Mike bead blasted them with medium grit glass media to clean them up substantially before reinstalling them on the car and hooking up the e-brake line on the back of the caliper. With everything looking good, he topped off the brake fluid and attached a power bleeder to the system to bleed the brakes. Once the system was flushed, he finished by covering up the bleeder valves and reinstalling the wheels. And remember, the caliper repaint was part of a larger suspension upgrade video from a failing stock magnetic ride system to the JRZ RS Pros. To watch the full length video, click the link above. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.